worry about the surroundings. It's time just to give him praise, to exalt his name, to give him glory, to lift him up, and to declare the word of God. It's free in this land and free in our hearts. Come on, sing this out now. Your grace for me will always be more than enough, more than enough. The power of Jesus Christ in me is more than
today, and we have a lot of different ones that are under the weather, and as my wife, Anel, mentioned, we've got three uh, connected with our church that do have tested positive. Let's keep them in our prayers. Dave and Bayana usually sits right back over here, haven't been here. This would be in the third Sunday, so uh, let's pray for them. And let's pray for artists and especially as well, Roger, uh, in that situation, we're believing the Lord. You know, many times I believe that drastic measures, uh, when we're facing desperate times, it uh, requires us to take desperate measures in our seeking the Lord. And uh, I I want to proclaim a fast for this church and for what our season and our nation and everything we're going through. Uh, as the Lord will lead you, this, this is between you and the Lord. I'm not going to sneak around and see where you're eating and what you're eating. That's between you and the Lord. I never tell my wife, you know, okay, honey, this is what you're going to do, and you're going to eat like this. I wouldn't get away with that anyway, but uh, I just want to encourage you, however the Lord leads you, whether it's a three-day fast, when the people of God were under a king and a wicked man named Haman, the prime minister of the land, he set out to destroy all of the Jews. And the word shows us that Esther proclaimed a three-day fast. And during that fast, if you'll read the story, and if you need encouragement for your fasting, I encourage you to read about Esther, or I encourage you to read about Daniel's fast. Daniel fasted 21 days. And uh, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast when they were under attack. How many of you know that the church today is under attack by the enemy? And I'm thrilled that the Lord says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Let's say that together. The gates of hell shall not prevail. So I want to encourage each of us today as the Lord will lead us. Uh, I believe that the Lord has spoke to my heart that I need to go on a fast. And I believe in the Lord that we're going to come out victoriously. I believe the Lord's going to help us to press through. You know, as I was reading and studying the Word this past week, a, a scripture just dropped into my spirit, especially with the, the many that are dealing with health issues right now. And, and I would just say to all of us, let, let's just continue to be careful. Let's continue to uh, do our part in helping. Um, you know, we had all of our family in for Christmas. How many had a great Christmas? I hope you had a great time with your family, for you that were able to be with your family and all of our kids and grandkids. They came from everywhere across the United States, and it was really a wonderful time uh, with our family. And so I just encourage each of us to pray for our families. My little Caleb, he actually, uh, while they were in South Florida, they left for a couple days, and little Caleb broke his leg, and our hearts were just so disappointed that, you know, I'm just a freak accident. How many of the things do happen? Uh, honey, what is Caleb, seven years old? Nine years old. I'm a couple years behind. And uh, But Caleb broke his leg, and I, I just felt so bad for him. So let's pray for our families. Let's, let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our country. And for you that are watching online with us, I want you to go ahead and prepare the elements today. They're at the house, and you say, well, Pastor, you know, I don't, I don't have the communion set. I don't have the bread. Well, go get some crackers. You say, well, I don't have any juice. Well, go get some water. It doesn't matter, you know, even though we, we take the cup symbolic of, of the blood of Christ, use what you have there at the house, and we here in the church, we're going to do the same. And towards the end of my message today, we're going to take communion together. I believe it's going to be a precious time. And um, John and Chanda, thank you so much for that leading us in worship today. 
Uh, my heart was blessed and touched, and I enjoyed that. And I also want to thank John and uh, Chanda, especially as they, they've they come up with a new design for our stage, and I appreciate all the hard work that uh, John, especially, and, and his great design. I mean, you, you would have thought this came out of uh, L.A. somewhere, but let me tell you what, it it looks awesome. I think they just did a great job, and, and yeah, go ahead and give them a great hand. Didn't they do a great job? I really appreciate that. We've come a long ways from the planks in the background, so the Lord is good. I want you to open your Bibles this morning because I, I'm going to share a word today that, that I believe that uh, the Lord has dropped into my spirit, into my heart. And today I want you to look at Romans 13, or Romans 15, verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. If there's anything that each of us need in this hour, we need this scripture. Let's read it together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I believe it's the enemy that tries every way he can to strip my hope that I have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So great to see you this morning. Susan had a fire at her home a few weeks ago. And seven fire trucks pulled up to her house as her fireplace area caught fire. And uh, But Susan, aren't you glad for hope in the Lord today? You know, it's great that Susan's still with us because she could have been lost in that fire. But I'm grateful that no matter how tough the fire of life gets, that there is a hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading about Samson, and I'm reminded as First Peter, he says, Think it not strange, the fiery trial, which is to try you. Some of you online today, and I know you're home, and some of you are wrestling with coals, and you're wrestling with not feeling good. And I had, you know, probably 50% of the church contacted me and said, Pastor, we're not going to be there today. And then there's others that have said, Pastor, I've got a friend that's got COVID, and I'm just going to be use caution. And, and we appreciate all of you, whether you're online or you're here today. And it's so good to see each of you here on campus. But Peter said, Think it not strange, these fiery trials which are to try you, as though something strange has happened unto you. But then he doesn't stop there, but he says, but rejoice. Say that with me, but rejoice. How many of you know it's not always easy to rejoice when you're going through some pain? It's not always easy to rejoice when the song is a little off note in your life. It's not always easy to rejoice when you're dealing with a mess whether the mess is in the family, whether the mess is in your health, whether the mess is in your marriage, whether the mess is at your work, whether the mess is with your vehicle, it doesn't matter what it is. And when John was singing a song this morning, he didn't really know what I was preaching. But there's a part of that song that y'all were singing, John, that, that just it, it even confirmed one more time, this is a word that I know I'm supposed to deliver and share today. And how many of you are thankful that God does get right in the middle of our situation? My wife mentioned it when she was praying this morning, how that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fire, what happened? The fourth man showed up. And even the king looked down into that furnace, and he said, wait a minute, I told you to throw three men. Who's the fourth? Wait a minute. I believe he is as the Son of God. He literally was Jesus. He was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And I'm so glad that regardless of how hot it 
gets in these last days. And I do believe everything that's going on that we're facing, I believe it's all pointing to the end times. How many of you believe he is going to come again? The same way that he left, he will return in so like manner. He's coming again, but everything is beginning to line up Knowing that Jesus, he says, there's going to be birth pains, just like a mother has a baby, has a child. She starts having those birth pains, and I believe if you look around, you're beginning to see the birth pains that is happening around the world, not just here in America. The heat is getting turned up, but how many of you are glad that no matter how many times the enemy tries to turn the heat up on our faith? on our courage, on our confidence that the Lord, he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. How many of you can testify today? He's got right in the middle of the mess. He's gotten right in the middle of the dilemma that you have dealt with in your own life. Bonnell and I can testify today. He is a God that will not leave you right in the middle of the question mark in life. How many has ever had a few question marks? How many has ever had a few commas? There's a pause, and you're like, what's this about, God? Susan, I'm sure when you're trying to get through the ordeal, you're going, God, what's this about? I'm so grateful today that between the mess and a miracle that God is right there in the middle. Paul said to the Ephesians, Brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Is that what he said? No, he said be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this, of this world. How many of you know that? that's another great reason we need to go on a fast? Don't worry that you're going to wear away in three days. Don't worry that, you know, a seven-day fast is going to set you back so far. That's a lie out of hell. Every fast that I've gone on and I've been obedient with the Lord, I can tell you that God's faithful. How many of you believe he's still working on you today? Let me see your hand. You at home today, do you believe he's still working on you? He's still working on Danny, and I know he's still working on Von L. He's still working on all of us. And if you'll open yourself and submit yourself to his mighty hand, He'll work on you, but pastor, how do I get through the rumble? How do I get through the mess? How do I deal with my hurt and my pain, and how do I deal with this test that I'm in? I'm so glad you asked me because I'm going to share that with you today. You see, between, between the swings that the enemy takes at you, if you ever had anybody swing at you, what do you do? I don't know if you're smart. You'll probably duck. But you see, when the enemy takes a swing at me, i got to do more than duck. You know, I believe that whatever struggle I'm in today, God's just preparing me for the next one and the next one and the next one because God's trying to perfect our faith. There was a famous fight some of you are old enough to remember, but a billion people tuned in back in 1974 between George Foreman, who held the title, the heavyweight, and Muhammad Ali decided he would contest that champion. And Muhammad Ali actually was seven years older than young George Foreman, 25 years old. In that 
round that day as people were putting their bets on George Foreman. Because, you see, George Foreman had never lost a fight. But Ali, Muhammad Ali, he decided, I'll challenge the champion. And round one, here comes George Foreman. And round two, here comes George Foreman. And most of the seven rounds, he had Muhammad Ali on the ropes. Does there anybody here feel like 2020's had you on the ropes? Does anybody feel like you've just been knocked back, knocked down, and knocked around? But in that seventh, somewhere in that seventh round, he grabbed George Foreman. He put his arms around as he would do, and he whispered in his ear. You know what he said? Is that all you got? Now, here is a man that Muhammad, most of the fight, has got his arms up while George Foreman is plummeting and throwing him on the ropes. Here's world championship boxing match down in Zaire, but a billion people are watching. And in the eighth round, something unusual happened. Everybody was betting on George to win, but Muhammad Ali said a few things of intimidation. And before the, before the fight was over, Muhammad Ali was wearing him down, and he knew he was wearing thin and wearing out and frustrated and aggravated with this Ali, and he quickly realized this guy can handle a punch a little better than I ever thought he could. And finally, he hit George Foreman and knocked him out to the canvas, and Muhammad Ali won that championship. How many of you believe that today God's going to take the last swing? How many are here today and you've, you've just gotten a little frustrated with the enemy that just keeps knocking you and punching you and hitting you against the ropes? And I feel like some of you here today, and especially you that are home today, you feel like you're being all knocked around. But I'm here to tell you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. How are we going to when, Pastor? How are we going to come out on top? How are we going to deal with the test? How are we going to deal with our setbacks? How are we going to deal with getting knocked down and knocked around? How do we get up? I want to tell someone today, in the name of Jesus, get up. You see, the devil is a great intimidator. The Word teaches us the Word says in Judges 4, and he speaks of Samson that was on his way to Timnath. And the Bible says that while he was on the path, on the road, on the journey, that a young lion roared against Samson. Do you remember that? I feel like the coronavirus is a roar right out of hell. And I feel like the enemy is roaring as loud as he can with intimidation. And he's doing everything he can cause to cause you doubt and discouragement and, and the disappointments that maybe you've faced in your finances or maybe the discouragement that you have felt all around you. But I love and I know the Spirit of God spoke to me this week. The Bible says that when that young lion roared against Samson, it says the Spirit of God came upon Samson. Folks, that same Spirit can come on us in this hour when you're in a setback, when you're facing the pauses, when you're facing the difficulties, when you're facing your worry instead of worshiping God. The Bible says he that lion, and he literally tore him to pieces. That wasn't man. That was the Spirit of God.
God that caused him to rise up and overcome what the enemy was trying to use to defeat him. Friend, that's what fasting will do. It'll allow us not to operate in the flesh. But God says, it's not my might that's going to win. It's not my power that's going to overcome. But it's by his spirit, says the Lord. Go ahead, lift your hands for a moment and say, Lord, fill me with that spirit. Fill me, Lord, with your anointing so I can defeat every giant. I can defeat every devil that is trying to destroy my life. I'm talking to somebody today. Let him touch you this morning right where you are. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your Holy Spirit. You know, some of you have dealt with some losses. Pastor, how, how do I get between my losses and new life? That's where somebody's at right now. Pastor, I've lost some things. I was reminded if you've ever heard of Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom experienced the persecution of the Nazis. She was thrown into a concentration camp. And she said something that as I was studying that just rose up in me. Here's what she said. If you look within you'll see distress. If you look outwardly, you'll probably get depressed. But I like this. She says, but if you look up to God, you'll find rest. Nowhere does God say, I'm going to understand all the stuff that I'm going to deal with. But I do know this, that between the mess I may be dealing with, there's a miracle in the making. Susan, you take hope today. I know you experienced some losses, but he said better is going to be the end. Come on, say it with me. Better is going to be the end. And he said, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So, Pastor, how how do I deal with my chaos? I think everybody here today could take an hour and talk about your chaos. We've all had chaos. Maybe it's been in your health. Maybe your family. Maybe your son, your daughter. Maybe your daughter's gone rogue. Possibly your son is just doing his own thing. But I want to tell you, between the chaos, if you'll let God get in the middle, you need to start looking for a celebration. How many of you enjoy celebrations? How many of you enjoy wins? You need to start dwelling on the wind that's going to come in spite of what the chaotic enemy has been doing around the clock to try to clean your clock. God's bigger than any devil in hell that's out to steal your joy and your peace and your hope. Oh, there's a hope that is greater than my hurt. There is a hope that is greater than my pain. And if you'll keep pressing, Paul said you got to press in this race. He used a marathon as an analogy. He said you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to press towards the mark. You got to finish this course. How many of you plan on finishing the race that God has started in your life? He's not finished. He's not through. You're sitting in the living room today. You need to declare, devil, get behind me. I know the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, he's a God that knows how to finish what he starts. Oh, I encourage you today To rise up, you say, but, oh, pastor, you don't know about my brokenness. Some of you have been broken. But can I tell you, he'll get right in the middle of your brokenness. That was a God song this morning, John. He'll get right in the middle. 
He says, I'll never leave you. He says, I'll never forsake you. He says, I'll be there till the end. Do you believe that? You watching online today, right in the middle of what you're dealing with, he's there. And you know what? As you keep pressing, you make the devil just a little bit nervous. Let me tell you what makes the devil nervous. Between your mess and the coming miracle, Always let the message of hope stand up on the inside of you. There was a reason that I felt a couple years be ago before I ever knew where I was headed. I didn't tell anybody. But I felt like God said, you're going to start a new church called the Church of Hope. And I said, really, Lord? How many of you believe people need hope? A message of hope. Let it stand up on the inside of you so that people can see the hope of Christ that's in you. Oh, God forbid we walk around in the midst of our pain and we look like we've been sucking on lemons. Anybody ever sucked on a lemon? Oh, man, can it turn your face in a hurry. No, I don't want to look like I've been sucking on all the negativity that's coming down the pipe. And if you give your ear to all the negativity, I promise you the devil will make sure you find it and you hear it. And let me tell you what, he's got a mega voice and he'll try everything he can to dampen the hope of Christ. Oh, Paul said, don't lose your hope. Before we take communion, I, I, I want to end with this. The Apostle Paul, he had been beaten. He had been laid many stripes on his back. Paul and Silas, they were declaring who Jesus was and that he's the risen Savior. The Word says that the Apostle Paul, that while he was going from town to town, there was a woman who had a spirit of divination. In other words, she was possessed by the devil. And she was frustrating and aggravating and trying to hinder Paul as he's walking the path of his anointing. And the Word says that while she was saying, listen, listen, Here's the man of God, worshiping the man of the Most High. And Paul turned around, and keep this in mind, this little damsel, this woman was being paid. She was a slave. She was a fortune teller. And the Word says that the ones who were paying her to do fortune telling, when Paul turned around and rebuked that devil and said, you come out, he recognized the devil that was working through her. And when she was delivered, well, the men just realized we, we, our income's just going to dry up. I mean, that was their business. They were making, they were rolling in the dough, so to speak, off of this woman who was fortune-telling. They created up such a stir. They created up a, a mob stirred up, and they threw him before the courts and said, this man is caused a stirring in Rome. He ought to be put in jail. Paul was falsely accused, and they put him in jail prior, they, they laid stripes upon their backs. And if I was sitting in a prison cell, and I'm just being straight with you, I'd be a little tempted to bellyache. I'd be a little tempted to whine and to murmur and complain. But Paul and Silas, right in between Paul and Silas, they are chained. They're chained to a soldier who has been commanded to watch. 
Matter of fact, they were such a threat, they threw them in the inner prison. Think of that. Right in between was a soldier with chains on their feet. If you really want to bring the message of hope, here's how you do it. Paul, instead of whining and murmuring and belly aching, he looked at Silas and he said, why don't we just start singing Amazing Grace? How sweet the sound. Now, that's my interpretation that saved a wretch like me. They started singing praises unto God. And, you know, God in heaven. How many of you know he listens to what comes out of our mouths? He listens to what I'm saying in my tough time. He listens to me when I'm going through chaos. He listens to me when I'm going through through hurt. He listens to what's coming out. So if you want to overcome the mess and the hurt and the pain and the test and the setback and getting knocked down, you know what you do? Just like Paul and Silas, they started singing praises unto God right in the middle of their mess, in their hurt. And you see, if we'll do the same thing, he'll turn your mess to a miracle. You know what God did? He sent an earthquake that shook that prison and the jail doors opened up all because I believe a man in the middle of his pain, he saw the peace of God flood his heart in the midst of his hurt. He saw the great healing come that day to many lives. He saw the dream that God gave him. He was going to deliver him right in the midst of the chaos. So friend, if you're going to get through, don't ever lose your message of hope. There is a God in in heaven today that he knows where you are right in the middle of your situation. I want you to stand to your feet all over the building today. And John, I, I'd love if you could just sing that song again as we are preparing to take communion. And as we today humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, I want that same spirit that came on Samson. I want that same spirit that the anointing will give me power to defeat worry. How many of you know that there's really no value in all of your worry? You know, worry is really like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but it'll take you nowhere. So instead of worry, you know what? I'm going to worship you, Lord. Turn your worry into worship. Don't lose your hope. In just a moment, I'm going to read what Paul said out of Corinthians about taking the cup. You that are at the house, go ahead, get your emblems. The juice represents the blood of the lamb. The bread represents his broken body. Let's just worship the Lord for a moment before we take of the cup and we take of the bread. We bless you, Jesus. We Can't bless you. Go back to the beginning. Thank you, Lord. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be. I'm not in Will you meet me here again? Thank you, Lord. Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Even if you're there on the couch, just lift a hand and just begin to thank the Lord today. He's going to be there right in the middle, right in the middle. 
Thank you, Lord. You help us deal with the in-betweens, Lord. As I walk down through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadows. Hallelujah. the Lord Jesus the same night which he was betrayed he took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take eat this is my body which is broken from you if you'll prepare and take with me the bread I'm going to pray before we take now, the word teaches us to search our hearts. Paul says that if we'll examine our hearts, then let him eat of that bread. Let's pray. Father, David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So Lord, wash us this morning. Cleanse us today. Lord, thank you for the riches of your body that was broken. Thank you, Lord, that you gave everything so we could see the miracle, so we could experience peace, so we could experience healing and health, so we could experience a comeback, so we could experience your incredible love for God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son but whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life if you don't know him just say jesus be my lord be my savior this day lord i surrender all to serve you and live for you in jesus name Let's now, let's take the bread together. Thank you, Lord. And then it says, after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament. In my blood this do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the lord's death till he come i'm gonna ask my wife if she'll pray one more time before we take of the cup
is you, covers us and wraps us. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the blood. In Jesus' name. Church family, let's take of the cup together. Praise God. Praise God. In your own way, one more time, just tell him you love him. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Worship you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. We honor you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lamb of God. Lord, for that one today that needs help, that needs healing, that one today that needs a miracle, that one today that needs a breakthrough, Father, get right in the middle, Lord, and show yourself, improve yourself, make yourself strong, Lord. We'll honor you. We'll bless you. We'll thank you. Come on, let's give the Lord a big praise offering in the house today. Go ahead, bless the Lord there at home today, church family. He's with us. Thank you so much for watching our Sunday service. If you enjoyed that and you'd like to view more, visit our YouTube page at Church of Hope Jacks.